Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 93 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of proximal cap ambiguity. The patient was referred for CTO PCI of a mid LAD CTO. The occlusion was at the takeoff of a large diagonal branch and the distal vessel was filling via epicardial collaterals from the circumflex. There was a length of approximately 30 millimeters, and the distal vessel appeared to be of good quality. When there is proximal cap ambiguity, there are different ways to resolve the ambiguity, including doing different geographic views, for example, to see if there is a nub or an entry point into the occlusion, using intravascular ultrasound if there is a large side branch close to the occlusion, like was the case in this particular patient, that can help elucidate the origin of the CTO. One can use move the cap techniques in which a dissection is created through which a wire is advanced in the subintimal space. And of course, if undergrade techniques are not successful, retrograde crossing can help with proximal cap ambiguity either by retrograde crossing or by inserting a retrograde wire that acts as a marker of the position of the distal vessel. In this particular case, because we had a large side branch, the first step we were planning to do is insert a standard workhorse guide wire into the branch. So in case a dissection happened, there will be no compromise of flow in this large branch. And then we decided to first try intravascular ultrasound guided puncture since undergrade has lower risk than retrograde. If it didn't work, then try to cross this um, tortuous large epicardial branch and leaving the sexual reentry as a last option. So we did intravascular ultrasound and that did demonstrate that the osteum of the occlusion, the origin, was highly calcified and was right proximal to the takeoff of this large diagonal branch. However, there was really not any nub or entry point, and there was a smooth transition between the proximal LAD and this diagonal branch. So the challenge here was that there was no entry point into the occlusion, although we did understand where the occlusion actually was. So we tried multiple undergrade crossing attempts. We used several guide wires, including um, the Hornet 14, the Gaia First, a Pilot 200, and a Confianza Pro 12, trying to puncture into where we knew was the proximal cap, but we were unfortunately not successful. We therefore tried to do epicardial crossing. We used a Kerville microcatheter through this uh, obtuse marginal branch, and then a SUO 03 guide wire to try to wire through the tortuosity. One of the potential challenges when there is a single large collateral branch is that going through it can cause significant ischemia if flow through this branch is compromised. Unfortunately, there was significant tortuosity, and despite multiple attempts, we were unable actually to advance a guide wire through this um, epicardial collateral. We therefore switched back to the undergrade approach, advanced a microcatheter to the proximal cap, and tried again with the Pilot 200 and a Confianza Pro 12 guide wire. And this time, we were able to advance the wire into the subintimal space as confirmed by injection, that shows that the um, guide wire in the LAD is actually dancing in sync with the uh, distal true lumen. So we had subintimal crossing from the LAD into the occlusion. We use the Pilot 200 as a knuckle to advance a little further down. We have again nice uh, moving of the guide wire in sync with the distal vessel. And then we advanced a stingray balloon and perform the double blind stick and swap, which means we puncture on both sides of the balloon up and down. And then uh, we swapped for a pilot 200 guide wire that was unsuccessful in this location. However, we moved the stingray balloon a little further down, which is a maneuver commonly referred to as the bobsled maneuver and then attempted re-entry again. This maneuver is not the favorite one since we may lose more branches the further down we re-enter into the vessel. However, we tried several times more proximally and we were unable to enter. We therefore went further down and this time with the double blind stick and shop technique, we were able to advance the Pilot 200 guide wire into the distal true lumen. 
the microcaster was advanced in a distal vessel. The Pilot 200 was exchanged for a workhorse guide wire, as we do for all CTOs. And then stents were placed in the distal to medial AD, as well as more proximally. We did maintain the wire into the large diagonal branch to make sure we have access to the branch. And then given it was such a big branch and that we had used a dissection reentry technique, we decided to use the DK crash or double kiss crash for the first diagonal and LED. This was done by inserting first a stand into the diagonal branch that was crushed with a balloon in the LED, the diagonal branch was rewired, and then the first kiss was performed. And then we advanced uh, another stand into the LED. The stand was deployed, the diagonal was rewired, and then we did uh, a second kiss inflation by doing high pressure inflation first in the side branch, the main branch, and then the two together. We made sure that the stand in the proximal LED did not go into the left main, as can seen in this injection. And by doing this, we achieved a nice and geographic result. We did have TIMI3 flow into the LED while maintaining flow in this very large diagonal branch. It was a complex procedure requiring strategy changes from undergrade to retrograde back to undergrade, 68 minutes of fluoroscopy time. We used a new X-ray machine, uh, a Siemens machine, and the radiation dose was 1.8 gray. However, 450 ml of contrast were used. This case does illustrate some of the challenges associated with proximal cap ambiguity. The most important thing is to have options and understand what these options are. And these options are both undergrade as well as retrograde. And what we did in this case is explore those options sequentially. Undergrade options are always preferred over retrograde if feasible because of the lower procedural risk. So we did do the IVUS guided puncture first that was unsuccessful. Then we tried retrograde, which did not succeed. And then we returned to undergrade puncture. We did go subindimal, and then we had to use reentry techniques to recanalize the vessel. So knowing the options and sequentially exploring the options are the key to success to those lesions with proximal cap ambiguity. Thank you.